Hey, Yvette. Long time no see. I heard you got married, sis. Could it really be? Why didn't you tell me? That's like, so not cool. Oh, hi. It's been a while, Tamsin. Why are you messaging me out of the blue all of a sudden? Didn't I just say? You got married, right? Why didn't you tell me anything? I did tell mom and dad, but they just told me, to quote them, to do whatever the hell I please. I can't say I was too interested in carrying on the conversation. I mean, come on, sis. We haven't seen each other or spoken in years. Why would I go out of my way to tell you about my wedding? How could you be so cold? I'm your little sister. In spite of that, I haven't heard a peep out of you in years. And if that's not bad enough, you kept your damn wedding of all things a secret from me? You're just making me sad here, sis. You feel sad? You've got some nerve. Did you forget about everything you did to me? Huh? What are you talking about? Did I do something to you? Are you seriously telling me you don't remember? You've been stealing all of my things since we were barely out of our push chairs. It only started out as toys, and I mean, fine, whatever. Kids will be kids. I wouldn't have a problem if it stopped there, but when we grew up, you escalated to stealing my favorite clothes and bags. Then, in middle and high school, you moved on to stealing my boyfriends. Even after that, you kept stealing my stuff. Nothing was safe. You took everything I worked so hard to buy myself with the money from my part-time job at the cafe. When I tried telling you to stop, you'd run off to mom and tell her I was bullying you so she'd take your side. Gee, sis, you still harping on about all that crap? Let bygones be bygones already. Sheesh. You're so petty. Anyway, I didn't do anything wrong, no matter how much you cry and complain. All I did was say I wanted your stuff. It was thanks to me constantly pestering mom and dad you got given so much stuff in the first place. So what if I have them? Something for me every now and then? What? You can't be serious. You don't see the problem with crying and screaming and kicking up a fuss until mom and dad got so tired of you they gave you my things to placate you? Not only that, but you're the one who made moves on my boyfriends. You went out of your way to steal them from me. Nuh uh. I so did not. I know you're still bitter, but accept it, girl. They chose me over you, and that's all there is to it. If you actually think about it, you'll see it wasn't my fault. LOL, but if there's one thing I might be guilty of, it's being more beautiful than you. Drop the act already. You were the one who went on the attack. You did it all on purpose. You know what hurt the most? Every time you succeeded in stealing something from me, you lost interest all of a sudden and threw it away. You went out of your way to throw my things in the trash when I was looking, to break up with my boyfriends right before my eyes. You'd condescendingly preach to me how you were entitled to throw away your things if you wanted to, but it was clear all you wanted to do was hurt me. You ridiculed and humiliated me at every opportunity. You made me feel like crawling into a hole and dying. I'll never forget what you did. Don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware mom and dad put you up to it half the time. Wah, wow, sis. You're an even bigger self-pitying loser than I thought. How can you have such a warped, twisted view of the world? Have you considered therapy? You're scary. You'll get even uglier at this rate if you're not careful. Have you considered thinking positively for a change? Negativity ages you, you know? Surely you have enough wrinkles already. The point here is that I want absolutely nothing to do with you or the rest of my family ever again. I made that pretty clear to mom and dad when I told them I was getting married. To my astonishment, Mom was actually adult enough to respect that, and she agreed never to make contact again. You didn't seem to get the message, though. I know she told you. Ugh, don't be so mean-spirited. You're my only sister in the world. I want to see your new husband. What's he like? I really wanted to go to the wedding, but thanks to you sulking, I had no idea where it was gonna be held. That's funny. You say you wanted to go to my wedding, but I know you had no intention of celebrating or being happy for me. I so did. Stop with this already. Your words, they cut me like a knife. Can you imagine, though? If I actually did go to the wedding, I would have stolen the show. Everyone would have been talking about me. I just know it. 
I guess it probably would have sucked for you to be upstaged by your beautiful little sis on your wedding day. I was right not to invite you. Even just the thought of it makes me feel ill on a visceral level. Honestly, you're the last person on earth I wanted to see there. Whoa, are you jealous? I can't pretend I don't get it though. If I was there, you would have been practically invisible on the most important day of your life. It was a good tactical move, I'll give you that. I'm not mad at you for not inviting me. Even a crusty loser like you should get to be in the spotlight at least once in her miserable life, right? And I so generously and benevolently didn't even try and track down the venue. Whatever. You can think and say what you like. I want nothing more to do with you. Are you done now? You really are cold. Let's face it. Any guy someone like you manages to bag isn't going to be anything special. He's the husband of a disappointing wrinkled hag in her 30s after all. Is he bald, fat, or some miserably old man who spends most of his life in an office cubicle getting shouted at by successful people? Maybe he's all three? Yep, you hit the nail on the head, so you may as well just leave it alone. I knew it! Enjoy your magic miserable lives together. Tamsin! Stay away from my husband! Huh? What's this about? Don't play dumb with me. You've been sending messages to my husband on Peepbook. Huh? So what? What's bad about that? Human beings talk to each other all the times. You know, it's a perfectly normal thing to do. Imagine getting upset over that. Cringe. You baffle me. Which part is normal? I'm the one who's baffled. Your behavior makes no sense. Use your head, pea brain. Your husband equals my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law equals my family. It's perfectly normal for me to talk to my family on social media. Surely that only applies to family you actually have anything to do with. Besides, even if it was normal, it's certainly not normal to send your brother-in-law pics of you in your underwear. If you think otherwise, I suggest you go get your head checked out. Wait a second, you crap me up, you vet. Those aren't my panties, it's a bikini. Panties or bikini, the surface area is the same. Hey, you big hunky stallion, do you think I look cute in these? Seriously, I want to vomit. No one in their right mind would send anything like that to their sister's husband. You're overthinking this like you do everything else, and you have the gall to call me a head case? I didn't mean anything by it. It was just a bit of light-hearted fun. Take a chill pill. Ah, I get it. You're losing your mind because you think I'm gonna steal your husband, aren't you? I mean, I guess it makes sense. Let's face it, you're never gonna come out on top in a contest between me or you. Do you never get bored of this? Just give it a break already. Your very existence disgusts me more than words can describe. Whoa, scary. Who says stuff like that? Does your husband have any idea what a deranged psycho you are? You're a real nasty piece of work. You should be locked up. I feel kind of bad for him. Did he know what he was getting himself into? I fear for your married life together. Should I send in a rescue team? LOL. He knows me better than any of my actual family do. So thanks, but we don't need your concern. That's why we got married. Hmm, but you know you and him aren't a good match, don't you? You'll never last. I know, sis. How he's tall, dark, and handsome. How he's on six figures in a management role at a major company. My friend told me, and I told mom. Wanna know what she said? That a young beauty like me is far more suitable for a high-spec guy like him. I agree, he's wasted on you. Maybe it does look like we're a mismatch from the outside. And you know what? Think what you want. I don't care. We got married because we love each other. You can try and tempt him all you like, but you're wasting your time. Is that a challenge? You do remember how every single boyfriend you've ever had broke up with you for me, right? You should be more careful about what you say. I hate to break this to you, honey, but your husband replied saying he wants to meet me. Surprise, surprise! He chose the young beauty over the dried up hag. Is that so? I'm happy for you to think that. Yep, that is so. 
Looks like you have some preparations to make. Preparations? For the divorce? I've decided I'm gonna go through with it. Me and him are going to get married. After all, me taking away everything you hold dear has become somewhat of a family tradition. It'd be a shame if not to keep it alive. Seems like your husband's fully on board with that too. You wouldn't want to stand in the way of the man you love getting what his heart truly desires, would you? I see. Do you really want him that badly? Yep, I want. I'm so much better suited to him. He's gonna be the happiest man on earth with me in his arm. I see. Fine. Leave it with me. I'll send everything over. Huh? What the? I thought you'd be mad. Why are you going along with it so readily? Is it because you're putting your husband's happiness first? Discussing anything with you would only be a waste of time. Instead, I'm gonna give in and send you everything I own. Woohoo! That escalated quickly. I'm shocked, sis. I gotta admit, it's actually kinda disappointing. Although, guys like him only come around once in a blue moon. Handsome and a high earner. I shouldn't complain, really. Tee <laughs> I'm happy to leave you alone and let you live out the rest of your years in lonely misery after this. So make sure you deal with the divorce proceedings ASAP, okay? Hey! What the heck? What's going on? Explain! What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? You know exactly what I mean, don't play dumb. I'm asking you what the heck you think you're playing at sending a load of garbage at my house. But didn't you say you wanted all of my things? That's why I sent you all of my things. What? What? Why would I want your trash? Have you lost your mind? Come on, trash is taking it a bit far. It might not be brand new, but the TV is still watchable. And the furniture is still in pretty good condition. You have no idea how much of a help you've been. I had no idea what I was going to do with all the furniture and appliances from when I lived on my own when I moved in with my husband. I was actually thinking of taking it to the landfill. Laws around recycling have gotten real strict lately, and it seemed like more trouble than it was worth. I couldn't believe my luck when you said you wanted it all. Thanks so much, Tamsin. You're a lifesaver. Are you messing with me? No, 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 not at all. You said you wanted all of my stuff. So, I sent you all of my stuff. That's all. I said I wanted your husband, not this crap. I never said anything about sending me a pile of trash, not even once. Ah, uh, but you see, my husband isn't a thing, nor is he stuff. He's a human being. I have no right to give him away like some possession. Besides, it's all still usable, so it's not trash. Ugh, just let me meet him. I don't know why, but your husband's pee book page disappeared since we last spoke and I can't message him anymore. I'm guessing you deleted it because you were panicking. If I can just meet him in person, he'll choose me. I just know it. My husband's pee book page? Oh, that. Now that you mention it, he did say some weird woman, obviously trying to look younger than she is, sent him some disturbing pictures. Apparently, he blocked her straight away. He said they made him feel uncomfortable. What? Weird? Trying to look younger than I am? Disturbing? My pictures made him feel uncomfortable? What? Are you making fun of me? I mean, is he wrong? You might be younger than me, but you are 30 now. You're well past the age you can go around using your youth as a weapon. You call me a wrinkly old hag, but I'm only two years older than you. Ugh, shut up! I've got you beat in every category. I get told I look like I'm in my early 20s all the time. Ugh, this again. I've been wondering this for a while now. But have you ever heard of the term flattery? Oh my god, what? What's gotten into you? You've been looking down your nose at me this whole time, haven't you? I don't need to hear this from the likes of you. You are, of course, free to think what you like about yourself. I think it's healthy to have a positive self-image, even if it is contradicted by reality. By the way, my husband did actually say he wants to meet you. Oh, he did? Really? Yes, really. 
He said your disturbing behavior made him so curious that he wants to know whether you're that weird in real life too. What? He said he wants to see the culprit behind the decade-long harassment campaign against me with his own eyes. He seemed genuinely amazed that someone like you is able to delude yourself that you're young or beautiful. No, it's you two who are weird. You're the ones who are messed up. Come to think of it, it makes perfect sense. You're a nutcase, so he'd have to have a screw loose to have anything to do with you in the first place. Birds of a feather. He's probably just trying to defend his wounded pride because he knows deep down he'd never have a chance with me. That's right, we're a pair of nutcases in love. I have to correct you though, you seem to have things the wrong way around. You're the one who doesn't have a chance with him, understand now? How about you just acknowledge it instead of trying to defend your wounded pride? You can't always have things your way. Shut up. When I find a guy to marry, he's gonna be the real deal, the genuine article. He's gonna be tall, handsome, rich, funny, witty, charismatic, popular, rich, and have great taste in women. The kind of guy who'd even turn you down in your dreams. You are disqualified at great taste in women. I wonder if you can really pull it off, though. If a cave troll like you can find a husband, there's no way I can't. The problem is, your only redeeming quality is your rapidly deprecating appearance. Besides that, maybe your youth? Even that's doubtful, though. Your personality is so rotten you give the devil a run for his money, and you're an unemployed shut-in who's barely even capable of housework. What do you bring to the table? I can do housework. What other skills do I need besides that? That's the most important thing for a woman. Have you seen the statistics on how much money beautiful women make in their lifetimes compared to ugly ducklings like you? I have and I know one thing. The good life is waiting for me. Hmm. But surely that only applies to beautiful women who take the time to reflect on themselves, learn skills, and become better people by enriching the lives of those around them. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it probably doesn't apply to poisonous, naive layabouts who think they're really beautiful just because they're young, which they're not, who contribute nothing of value to anyone. How could someone as ugly as you possibly understand? No one escapes aging and you're already 30. You can harp on about youth and beauty all you'd like, but there's no denying it, you're no spring chicken. You're past the point of being capable of begging a guy who's into young beauties. I hate to break this to you, but that ship left port and it's never coming back. Ugh, you're so annoying. Just shut up. You think you're so special because you got married? This is so went to your head. I don't think I'm special at all. All I'm doing is telling the truth. Oh, yeah, by the way, I got a message from mom. You are more reliable to us than that lazy good-for-nothing. Huh? She said you might have had a shot at marrying into wealth five years ago, but now you're just unwanted leftovers. She's completely useless. Despite being jobless, she barely even does housework. No way, she didn't say that. Mom and Dad said I'm valuable to them simply by existing. Mom said I might still have a shot at marrying into money. When was this? <laughs> you see, the thing is, Mom and Dad are currently in the process of trying to cozy up to me because they say the thought of relying on you in their old age makes them anxious. To think they spent all these years spoiling you as their favorite, it's really quite ironic, isn't it? It made me laugh when they suddenly started trying to curry favor with me the moment they heard about my husband, despite the fact that they told me never to contact them again. You've had them wrapped around your finger for pretty much your entire life, and to be fair to them, they have looked after you. Make sure you see them through their old age in comfort, okay? There's no way mom and dad would say those things about me. They'd never choose you over me. They always said I was their favorite, the beautiful daughter. Fine, ask them yourself. Ask them who they'd rather looked after them in their old age. Will you believe it when you hear it straight from mom and dad themselves? Or are you too stubborn and thick-headed even for that? 
The answer is obviously gonna be me. These are just lies and fantasies. Vicious lies and fantasies. It's always been obvious how mom and dad felt about you. You were a burden and a nuisance at best. Why would they do 180 all of a sudden now? They never loved you. I'm glad they never loved me. The thought that I could have actually turned out like you, a self-obsessed narcissist who thinks the world revolves around them, makes me shudder. All I feel for you is pity. The only thing in this world you have to be proud of are your rapidly deprecating looks, and I pity you from the bottom of my heart. I don't need your pity. The only one deserving of pity here is you, the withered old hag. Those parents never loved her. There you go again. You talk about people as if their appearance is the only thing that matters. Love that expects some kind of reward isn't love at all. Is this bold font all you've got? You really are pathetic. To think the woman who spent her entire life on the losing side, having everything she held dear stolen from her, would have the nerve to speak to me like that. And yet you tried to steal this pathetic old hag's husband. What does that make you? Are my hand-me-downs the best you can do? How about you find someone with your own hard work, based on your own merit, who loves you for you? You know, like I did. The most important person in my life, who you're not capable of stealing. I found him with my own hard work and determination. There's not a single person on this planet who loves you for who you are because you're rotten to the core. You wasted your life playing malicious games to massage your overinflated ego. And where did it get you? You really are pathetic. Unable to cope with the thought of being rejected, apparently Tamsin went on the offensive against mom and dad, demanding they choose between me and her. Of course, mom and dad, who only judged books by their covers, chose me and my high-earning husband. That was the spark that started the fire, and before long, the entire street was woken up at 2 a.m. by the argument to end all arguments, which resulted in mom and dad booting her out. Unable to cope without a constant stream of praise and approval from others, Tamsin started working in the adult industry. But even that didn't last long. Competing for work with girls much prettier and younger than her, she was treated like used goods, found it impossible to stay afloat, and was forced to quit. Refusing to accept reality, she then applied for a series of high-class escort agencies. They all turned her down. How do I know this, you ask? She posted it all on her peep book page. Last I heard, she was etching out a living with money from the wallets of her multiple lovers and sugar daddies. But when I say etching out, I really mean it. She begs mom and dad to take her back on practically a daily basis. It seems like she didn't learn anything from what I told her at the end. I have a feeling she'll live out the rest of her days in self-absorbed ignorance and nothing will change. As for my parents, who initially had no interest in my wedding, they had a mysterious change of heart the moment Tamsin told them he was a high earner in a managerial role at a major company. Apparently, they tried to get Tamsin to convince him to marry her instead at first. But when they realized he had no interest in her online advances, they switched tactics to cozying up to me in an attempt to mend our troubled relationship. I've been working at a prestigious insurance company since I graduated college, and I bring in a decent salary myself. It must have finally dawned on them that I was infinitely more valuable to them. Than the long-term, unemployed, and impossibly selfish Tamsin. Obviously, I have no interest in having anything to do with them for as long as I live, so I got a new phone number, and me and our husband moved into our new place together. Naturally, I didn't tell them my new address, nor do I intend to. With that, the messages from them finally stopped, and me and my husband are enjoying our newly married life together. I don't need any of them in my life. The parents who raised me and my sister constantly comparing us and playing favorites, or the sister who made it her life's mission to steal everything I hold dear. From here on out, it's just me and my husband, who chose me and only me, and loves me for who I am. 
We're currently in the process of trying to create a big happy family, if you catch my drift. Dad, I want to come home. I'm so uncomfortable living with this guy I don't know. Huh? What are you talking about? Don't be silly, honey. Of course you know him. You're living with Mr. Fritz. But me and him have nothing to do with each other. Why do I have to live at your boss's house? I know you said it was for my own good, but did you really mean that? You brought and left me here one day all of a sudden. Then you had all my belongings sent here. Isn't this all just a little too much? You never even asked me whether I wanted any of this. Molly, the reason I did this is because I want you to be happy. If you live with my boss, you get to eat luxurious, expensive foods every day. Plus, all of your tuition fees for that elite technical school you've got your heart set on will be covered. Don't you think these are some pretty attractive benefits? I have my debts to think about too, you know. As much as it pains me, I couldn't realize my dreams for you by myself. At least this way, you get to live the life you want, right? You understand, don't you, Cupcake? I wanted to give you a life free of worry and financial hardship. You didn't have to do that. I never asked you to realize my dreams for me. As for the tuition fees for the technical school, there are scholarships, and I could always find a part-time job and save up money that way. Oh, Molly. What will it take for you to understand? The real world is a lot harsher and more unforgiving than you think. Anyway, living with your boss isn't worth any of those things. I hate it here and I want to come home. He always stares at me with these creepy eyes. It makes me so uncomfortable you wouldn't believe. I feel like I'm constantly looking over my shoulder and worrying about what he'll do next. Please, Dad, I'm reaching my emotional limit. Like how he'd do something like that? Are you claiming my boss is some kind of weirdo? Don't insult him like that. It's the truth. Please believe me. I don't have any friends in school, so there isn't even anyone else I can talk to about this. I feel totally alone. I'm begging you, Dad. I can't take it anymore. He sends chills down my spine. I'm not exaggerating. He's literally the creepiest guy I've ever met. What am I supposed to do? Calm down, Molly. Okay? You think too much. How big do you think the age gap between you and my boss is? He's almost 30 years older than you. Do you seriously think someone old enough to be your dad would be interested in you in that way? Huh? I messaged you exactly because I think that. Why are you ignoring what I say? I love you, Dad. How could you do this to me? What's going on with you? What are you thinking? I don't recognize you anymore. I'm your own daughter. I'm telling you I'm struggling and need your help and you don't even believe me? You're the worst. Sorry, Cupcake. I'd love to do something about it, but that's just not going to be possible given my position right now. I mean, I already moved house, which is why you have nowhere to live except my boss's place now. What? What did you do with the house? I sold it. Oh my god, are you joking? That house was full of memories of mom, and you sold it? You sold it without even telling me. What else was I supposed to do, Cupcake? I was late on my debt repayments, and they weren't going to pay themselves. Your mom is probably cheering me on from heaven, you know? She wouldn't want to see me struggling financially. Why didn't you even talk to me about it? Surely that was the least you could have done. That house was full of our memories together as a family. It was the only place I truly felt at home. The only place I felt like mom was still somehow with us in some way. Why would you do this? So you could go and live with Mr. Fritz. Listen to me, Dad. Is there really no way I can come and live with you? Was this really just so you could pay off your debts? Of course it was, Cupcake. You wouldn't lie to me, right? You wouldn't hide anything from me, right? Like I said, you're living there to help me pay off my debts. Listen, the bottom line here is that you have nowhere to live except Mr. Fritz's house. And there's nothing either of us can do to change that. You only have six months of high school left now. You do want to graduate high school, don't you? If you moved out now, you'd have to drop out of school. And you'd enter the world of work as a middle school graduate. Do you know what that kind of life would look like? Do you? Is that what you want? If it's not, then please get through this somehow, Cupcake. Do it for your future. 
You probably just feel anxious because you're not used to living with my boss yet. He's a great guy, you'll see. If you could just do your best to hold out a little longer, taking things one day at a time, I'm sure you'll get used to him. If you don't, and after you graduate high school, you still want out no matter what, then I'll consider some other options, okay? I want you to remember that I'm on your side, Molly, and I never abandon you, okay? <coughs> Molly, where are you? Hey, answer the phone now! I won't. What the hell did you go and do? I just heard from my boss. He said you escaped? What the heck are you playing at? What do you mean, what did I go and do? Do you have any idea how much he terrified me? He made me go out to a fancy restaurant with him on my birthday. When we got out, he grabbed hold of my arm and dragged me somewhere against my will. Do you know where he took me? Did he tell you? You know, don't you? Sheesh, what's the big deal? It was just some run-of-the-mill business hotel. Which part of that hotel had anything to do with business? I can't take it anymore. I seriously, seriously can't take anymore. Everyone has a breaking point and this is mine. Even just thinking about it is traumatic. God, he's so gross. Fine. I'm gonna come and pick you up. Can you at least tell me where you are? Huh? No way am I telling you. What? Why not? How am I supposed to help you if you won't tell me where you are? I'm really worried about you, Cupcake. So you have to tell me, okay? You help me? You worry about me? You're the one who sold me to your freaking boss. It's nothing but lies, Dad. Do you actually think it's gonna work with me anymore? I heard everything about how you said he could do whatever he wanted to me when I reached 18. You said that, didn't you, Dad? In return for him reversing your dismissal from the company and having him take over your debt repayments, you sold him to me in return for all of that, didn't you? Don't be ridiculous. You don't really believe that, do you, Cupcake? <laughs> what kind of dad sells their own daughter? <laughs> you. It was my birthday today. You knew that when you sold me. I don't want anything to do with you ever again. You could disappear off the face of the earth and I wouldn't care. I wish you at least had the decency to get the hell out of my life before you put me through this hellish ordeal, though. Get out of your life? You're just being silly now. Anyway, get back to Mr. Fritz's house at once. Your whining is tedious, and I'm done listening to it. Did you hear me? I said, get back to my boss's house right now. Can you do this for me? For your dad? Please, Cupcake. I won't go back, and I won't do anything you say. Someone more important than you or your boss helped me out. It's all over now. Huh? <laughs> Someone more important than me or my boss? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm your dad, which means I can do whatever I want with you. Is this how you repay me for all the time, effort, and money I put into raising you? With spite and disobedience? I don't want to believe it, that you don't love me. It was such a shock because I loved you. And I mean, what daughter wants to accept their own dad would do something like that to them? But you know what? I'm actually pleased. Because there's nothing more reassuring than the promise of one's own safety. And I have that now. Bye. Hey! Just you wait! Molly! <laughs> President Cooper, um... Oh, I see you still haven't been arrested. I'd appreciate if I could speak to you one more time about the matter of what happened recently. I want to ask if you'll at least allow me the privilege of meeting my daughter one last time. Mr. White, my old employee, what are you talking about? You don't have a daughter, do you? Please, sir, respectfully. But I don't think this is the time for jokes. I'm talking about Molly. I implore you not to believe a word she says. It's nothing but baseless lies and deluded fantasy. She lost her mother at a very early age. And as a result, she's very emotionally unstable and has a tendency to say inappropriate things. That's why I need you to believe me when I tell you neither me nor Mr. Fritz had done anything worthy of criticism. You were never any good at your job, Mr. White. 
and you were one of the least enthusiastic employees I have ever seen. In spite of that, I still believed in you for some reason. But I had no idea you were the kind of dirtbag who'd sell your daughter. Sir, I must reiterate my previous point that I did not, in fact, sell my daughter. I'm not interested in hearing your excuses. You just said Molly's claims were deluded fantasy, didn't you? Me and my wife just saw her running away from Mr. Fritz, one of our former executives and your old boss, at a hotel. If what she's saying is deluded fantasy, what do you suppose it was that we saw? Baseless lies? Emotional instability? No, certainly, sir. You, you make a compelling case, and wow, I must say, you put it so eloquently, too. Truly a man worthy of the esteemed title of CEO. The problem is <clears throat> that the story you post seems to differ slightly from the version of events I myself was aware of. Do you still have no idea the gravity of what you've done? You sold your own daughter to your boss for no other reason than to pay off your debts, concerned with nothing more but your own self-preservation. Mr. Fritz has already been arrested. I find the thought of people as depraved as you two working at my company quite frankly terrifying, and I will stop at nothing to ensure your total eradication from the company ranks once and for all. Um, President Cooper, what's going to happen to me? I won't really be arrested, will I? Isn't there anything you can do about this? You know, pull some strings, make some phone calls? You're a very powerful man, after all. Please, allow me to take this opportunity to once again apologize sincerely for my careless mistake two months ago that led to our company losing a major client. I swear to commit my life to serving you and this company to the utmost of my ability. Please, allow me another chance to prove myself and make all this go away somehow. I'll do anything! Being allowed the great privilege of entering this fine company was the only thing I've ever been proud of in my entire life! Give it a rest, you sniveling weasel. You prioritize your own financial well-being over your daughter's physical safety and mental health, and you call yourself a father? She's your flesh and blood. I feel genuine horror when I reflect on what you did. I feel actual insanity in your words when I listen to your groveling, sycophantic brown nosing after the fact. Entering my company is the only thing you've ever been proud of, you say? Where's your pride as a father? Well, um... You evidently never felt any in the first place. I can't tolerate people like you. And I feel confident in saying that the majority of the other 8 billion people on the planet are with me on that one. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Excuse me? I take it this means you don't care what happens to your company. What are you trying to say? Your company's reputation will be destroyed over this. You'll lose your position in society, and no one will want to rest doing business with you again. Because you employed someone like me. There'll be no end to the anonymous criticism and harassment campaigns you'll be subjected to. And you'll be lampooned from all angles. Everything you work so hard to build will come to ruin. <laughs> It'll only be a matter of time before you go bankrupt. However, if I remain here, that can all be avoided. If you can use your power and influence to prove my innocence against these hurtful accusations, that is, Mr. Fritz did this all on his own after all, didn't he? How does that sound? Do we have an arrangement? I think you'll agree that this isn't a bad offer for you. In fact, I think you might find it quite beneficial. You're a smart man, Cooper. I think you understand what I'm saying. So what'll it be, President? Will you work with me on this? I see. <laughs> Interesting. Not a bad idea for someone so bad at his job, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. White. But the only outcome I'm interested in here is one that involves you being behind bars wearing orange. Huh? Please, look at this online news site. Hang on, I'll send you the link. Silicon Valley CEO rescues 18-year-old high school student is the name of the article. Huh? What? Seems like it's going viral. I caught a glimpse of it on both the local and national news programs, too. It really seems to be doing the rounds. No names have been released, so pretty much nothing has changed at the company for me or any of the employees. Did you read the article? They're singing my praises like you wouldn't believe. You should take a look. It's very relevant to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. 
This has to be fake, right? Don't you think the contents are a little too accurate for it to be fake? Not to hint of criticism or a single negative portrayal of me. This can't be happening. Anyway, even if my company did go bankrupt, I'd just start over and rebuild from scratch. I'm in the very favorable position of having more money than I know what to do with. Not to mention the many connections I forged with key players in the industry over the years. Your fate is already decided. President Cooper, please! I'm begging you! Please, help me somehow! There has to be something you can do! I don't deserve this! I'm about to take these chat logs to the police station where they'll be submitted as evidence. Would you like to add anything final before I do? Forgive me for cutting the conversation short, but you're irritating me now. Please do something! Anything! I'm begging you! Now it's your turn. I'm selling you to the police. <laughs> My dad was arrested immediately after, and he and his old boss, Mr. Fritzel, were sentenced to hard prison time. I was so overjoyed and relieved by the news that they wouldn't get out for at least a few years that I cried. When Mr. Cooper, the CEO of my dad's old company, stepped in to help me, I asked him, why would you help me, a complete stranger? As human beings, our highest priority is ultimately ourselves, and while those around us may be in trouble, they're still just strangers in the end. There's no meaning or merit to be had in helping them, right? Or so I thought. That's what I asked him, almost without thinking. Speaking honestly at the time, I genuinely saw no point in spending my time helping people I had no connection to. Mr. Cooper just said, I know better than anyone what it feels like to be overwhelmed with gratitude and joy when someone helps you in your hour of need. And with no further elucidation, dropped me off in front of his house with his wife. Initially, it seemed like I'd have no choice but to go into a care home because I had no relatives to speak of. But Mr. Cooper's wife hugged me tightly and through floods of tears kindly said to me, Molly, you're more than welcome to live here with me and my husband for as long as you need, if it's what you want, of course. I accepted, and lived with the two of them for about two months. I'm certain it was thanks to Mr. Cooper I was able to stay there, and I'll be eternally grateful for the way he was there for me when I needed a helping hand more than ever. This all happened a few years ago, and now... I'm working happily at Mr. Cooper's company, which he renamed and relocated not long after the whole Mr. Fritzel incident. The new HQ isn't too far from Mr. and Mrs. Cooper's house, which gives me great peace of mind in the event that there's any kind of emergency. He stressed empathetically that I didn't have to work at his company out of any obligation to him, and encouraged me only to stay if it was what I truly wanted. But what I truly want is to repay the debt of gratitude I owe to the man who saved my life. I still think about what happened back then from time to time, back when I had no friends or a soul in the world to rely on, and even my own family couldn't be trusted. I'm so happy now that that period in my life almost feels like a dream. Now I'm blessed with a workplace that's full of laughter, a close group of friends the same age as me, and a new family. I want to continue my life with a positive, outward-facing attitude. Just like my role models, Mr. and Mrs. Cooper. Thank you so much. Vincent, do you have overtime today too? Your supper is waiting for you. Should I start eating without you? If you want, you must be a real moron if you've been sitting there waiting for me all this time. Why do you have to speak to me like that? There's just no need. Did you forget already how mad at me you were last time when I ate supper without you? That's because it was still too early then. It's 10 p.m. now. This time's different. You don't have to wait around for me forever like some lap dog. Start using your own brain and eat without my permission from now on. <sighs> Fine, I will. What time do you think you're gonna get off tonight? Is this the same project you've been working on all month? What difference would it make if you knew? I was just wondering roughly what time I should expect you back. If I'm still awake, I don't mind making you something light. You're probably going to be pretty tired. You needn't bother. If you're cooking, I'll just eat out instead. What? Uh, why? 
I'm getting kind of bored of your cooking lately, Helen. It's... how to put this? Dry, bland, flavorless, and uninspiring. I put up with it all this time hoping you'd learn and improve, but it's just as hopeless as ever. You're getting worse, if anything. I'd rather eat out than force myself to eat your prison mush again. But I get new recipes off the internet and try making things all the time. Prison mush? How could you say that? The recipes might change, but the person doing the cooking is just as much of a flop as she always was. Your cooking just doesn't taste good, Helen. I kept it quiet this whole time because I'm a nice guy, but everyone has their limits. To put it bluntly, you have no sense. Is it really that bad? You always used to seem like you were enjoying it. What, back when we just got married? Give me a break! <laughs> Which freshly married guy wouldn't tell his wife her food was delicious, even if it wasn't? That's just how it works. Things have changed. I'm not obligated to lie to protect your feelings, or not have you sulk on me anymore. I see. I'm sorry. I could do better. I'll study the cookbooks and improve my game. I can do it! Cookbook study isn't gonna help you. We're way past that. How long have you been doing this now? You've been a stay-at-home housewife for what? Five years? It's pretty obvious you already hit your peak if you didn't improve at all in that time. There's no harm in just accepting it, you know? It's okay to admit you suck at something. Vincent, I can't help but feel you've been a little cold towards me lately. The things you say, you've become so uh, abusive. I do my best with the cooking, you know. I really do. I know you work hard, and I always try to make sure you have something you enjoy waiting for you on the table when you get home. You don't have to speak to me like that. It's like I'm not even human. And it's not just the cooking. You're getting old, too. Um, well... I guess I'm 30 now. I thought you were a real cutie back when you had your youthful good looks. But now, you're just a worn-out hag in her 30s. It's actually kind of sad to see how much your looks have deteriorated. That said, that's no excuse for rudeness. Mom and Dad always taught me to respect the elderly. So of course I'm gonna be super nice to you as always. Well, Vincent, you're a real charmer. A worn-out old hag. <laughs> you're hardly one to talk, are you? If you're gonna say that about me, I could just easily call you an old man, you know. You idiot! <laughs> a man is like a fine wine. He grows in value as he ages. I'm only gonna keep getting more attractive from here on out. Women, on the other hand, and I'm really sorry to have to tell you this, sweet cheeks, lose value with every day that passes by. Without your looks to rely on, you're nothing. You really should understand this by now. Uh, I had no idea you felt that way about women. This ain't just how I feel, babe. This is how all men feel deep down. Wanna know why? Cause it's the truth! <laughs> Not only that, but you're a stay-at-home housewife which makes your value to society lower than a piece of garbage. Garbage? Don't you think that's going a little too far? My god, you're horrible. Besides, you're the one who wanted me to become a stay-at-home housewife in the first place. You practically begged me. It's not like I wanted to stop working and dedicate my entire life to being your living slave. Slave? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. If you wanted to keep your job so damn bad, why did you resign as soon as I asked you to? Your life has been a breeze ever since. Seriously, you never had it so good, and you have the nerve to complain? Get out of here. I resigned because you said you wanted me to focus on the housework, and I wanted to make you happy. Plus, your mom and dad were always opposed to us both working, and I didn't want to rock the boat. It wasn't an easy decision, I could assure you. You have no idea how many sleepless nights I had in the run-up to actually handing in my resignation. You still did it though, and it was ultimately your decision. Stop trying to blame everything on me. You act like you have no free will of your own. If my parents told you to jump off a cliff, would you do that? Yeah, you know what? If we're gonna have this goddamn waste of energy discussion, I may as well make it known what a complete waste of space loser you are. How do you like them apples, huh? You're nothing without me, you hear me? I've met slugs more productive than you. 
There goes that famous charm of yours again. If I'm so useless, why were you so desperate for me to become a housewife? If you're gonna treat me like dirt, then I'll just go back to work. Oh, no you don't! The housework ain't gonna do itself, woman! <sighs> do it yourself! You really think I've got enough free time to be doing your job as well as my own? I'm a busy guy, Helen. Then, what is it gonna take to make you happy? What happened to you, Vincent? What happened to the Vincent I fell in love with? You never used to be this cold, heartless brute. You've changed too, Helen. Huh? Your face is all saggy now. You have wrinkles around your mouth too. What happened to my submissive, obedient Helen? And what the hell did I do to deserve this sassy bitch queen who thinks she has to talk back to me every time I speak? You don't have to answer. I know it's because you turned into a jaded old hag. <laughs> oh my god. Are you saying the only value I ever had to you was my youth? I mean, I never put it as bluntly as that. <laughs> but if that's what you think, then I'm not gonna argue over it. <laughs> I can't believe you're being like this. It's about time you knew your place, woman. You better make sure you work extra hard from now on to make sure I don't get completely bored of you. <laughs> Vincent, it's about the divorce papers you slammed on the table while I was eating my sugar loops in the morning. Did you sign them? Not yet. Why not? Be a darling and hurry up and get it done. Don't tell me you plan on clinging to me. We're finished. Accept it. I can't believe you do this on my birthday of all days. How could you be so heartless? I want a divorce. Whether it's your birthday or not doesn't change that. I'm not gonna play games with you. You'll get no fake kindness or insincerity from me. It might not feel great, but at least you know where you stand. Look on the bright side. Me being a heartless douchebag should make this a whole lot easier to go through with it. On the part where it says, reason for divorce, you wrote, because I'm 30? Uh, that's why you're divorcing me? Well... <laughs> it's not exactly like that. But look, I can't deny it. Attraction is important in a relationship, babe. And to tell you the truth, old ladies just don't do it for me. <laughs> So a 30-year-old is just an old hag to you? Face it, we're just not gonna see eye to eye on this. This is a fundamental difference in the way we view the world. Sign the damn papers already and stop giving me a hard time. Why would you ever want to stay with me? You'll only carry on getting hurt. I've been doing a lot of thinking about you lately. And I realized you've been being more and more horrible to me with every year I get older. I didn't want to accept it at first, but when I thought about it, the pattern was too obvious to ignore. Oh no, did I get found out? <laughs> you gotta admit though, I was pretty nice to you until you were 28, right? Say what you want about me, but a girl will get my respect and affection while she still brings something to the table. I see. I have absolutely no objection to divorcing you. Thank God for that. That's settled then. Make sure the divorce papers are signed and on the table by the time I get home. And once you've done that, make the necessary preparations for getting the heck out of my life! I'll sign the papers on one condition. Huh? One condition? What are you talking about? Admit to the affair and pay me compensation. What the hell? Did you just think I'd sat around doing nothing these last few months? You always said you were doing overtime, and yet not a single cent ever appeared in your wages. Even if it was unpaid overtime, you were still coming home way later than your boss would ever expect you to stay behind at the office. Even on his worst days. I've had my doubts for a while now. You got any proof? This is a pretty wild accusation you're making. I suggest you choose what you say next very carefully. Is that a threat? I'm saying it precisely because I have proof. You've been meeting some young floozy behind my back, haven't you? You've been cheating on me. So, what's it gonna be? I'm happy to take this through the courts, if that's what it takes. And don't think I'm backing down. So, make up your mind. You gotta own up to what you've done. Or shall we leave it to the judge instead? 
this is why old hags like you grind my gears. You go learning about things you have no business knowing, then you go making threats you have no right to make? Compensation? You've got some nerve. Me? <laughs> All I'm doing is defending myself. You're the one who's cheated on me in the first place. Yep, whatever. I'm the bad guy. I'll pay the compensation, no biggie. You goddamn worn out old hag. You're way past your sell-by date. Turns out your personality is just as rotten as your face. It's because you're twisted enough to try to pull masculine crap like this to salvage your dignity that I'm tossing you aside. <laughs> Nothing you say could possibly hurt me anymore. I've heard it all before. So this new chick I'm dating, she's got a cute face and a banging body. The most delicious pair of melons on her chest and the juiciest peach a man ever did see. Her personality's not bad either. Plus, she can cook. She's the whole package. She blows you out of the water. You probably just burst into tears from the crushing feeling of inferiority just from standing next to her. <laughs> You really think a used up, worn out, bitter old has-been like you has any hope at finding love again? Maybe if you settle for some 40-year-old fat dude who lives in his mom's basement. <laughs> Good luck with loser life! Lord knows you're gonna need it! <laughs> think of the compensation you get from me as a cheer of encouragement to get you started! <laughs> no matter what happens, I'll be a million times happier than you make me. <laughs> Impossible! All the high-value guys are going to be taken by young, quality women. In a sense, it must be liberating. You're so withered and past it, there's no point in trying. After all, how can things get any worse when you're already at rock bottom? That has to be a positive. Marriage isn't the only form of happiness in life. Spoken like a true loser. <laughs> You don't have to try putting on a bold front with me, sweet cheeks. I know how destroyed and broken you are inside. The only life that awaits you now is one filled with the regret of getting dumped by a high-earning stud from a major company. <laughs> you really are the lowest of lows. Marrying you was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> really? It wasn't all bad for me, you know. I was happy at the start. I got the privilege of enjoying you during the peak of youth, you know, before everything started sagging. <laughs> you might be a bitter, greedy, ball of worn out flab now, but things weren't always this bad. And I'm pleased to say I got the privilege of harvesting your fruits before the drought set in. You'll regret saying all those hurtful things one day. And you know what? It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, babe, but I have a banging hot young girlfriend, and things in my life could not be going better. Sucks to be you, huh? <laughs> you, on the other hand, you better start job hunting. But wait! Oh no! How are you gonna explain that huge stay-at-home housewife gap on your resume? Face it, you're useless to society now. Hopefully you can at least leverage that supreme arrogance of yours to your advantage. <laughs> Good luck! I'll be rooting for you from a tiny corner in the back of my mind as your ex-husband. <laughs> Long time no see. Who's this? It's me, you doofus. Vincent. What do you want? Ah, uh, no need to be so cold. Did your personality get even worse the more you aged? <laughs> If you didn't message me for a reason, I'm just gonna block you. No, wait a sec! There's a reason I messaged you, actually. What? It just so happens that I saw you by chance last week. Obviously you got even wrinklier because it's been a whole ten years, but you actually didn't look that bad for an old hag. I gotta give you some credit. I see. Then when I brought you up with a shared acquaintance of ours, she told me you were the CEO of a company now. My jaw nearly hit the floor! You sure came a long way since your days of being a piece of garbage. By being a piece of garbage, I take it you mean stay-at-home housewife? You're working now, so surely you understand. How useless and unproductive someone who's only capable of doing housework is, I mean. What a drain on society. Doesn't it just make you sick? You were young back then, so I guess I can forgive you. <laughs> I think a housewife's job is just as worthy of respect and admiration as any others. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I heard you made a company that employs housewives. What was it again? Housekeeping services? 
I knew it as soon as I heard. You only did it to spite me. It's obvious. <laughs> Sorry, Vincent, but this conversation isn't productive enough for me to continue engaging with. So rather than entertaining your fatuous nonsense for a second longer, how about you tell me who it was that you gave my contact information? Elena. You know, the one who managed that corporate event you and I met at all those years back? Why would Elena do that? She's the last person in the world I'd expect to leak my details to you. Me and some of the guys at work, we threw a big drinking party with one of our major clients the other day, and Elena tagged along. I may have borrowed her phone while she went to the toilet and had a little peek. <laughs> well, I see you're just as much of a scumbag as you always were. What was I supposed to do? You didn't tell me anything about you being a CEO now. So I had a little peek, that's all. What's the harm? She didn't even know. I really wanted to talk to you, so I had no choice. You're a complete stranger to me now. Damn, I might be too late. Seems like your personality's so warped, you can't even converse on a basic level now. Getting dumped all those years back must have really taken its toll on you. You still haven't mentioned anything that qualifies as a legitimate reason for contacting me out of the blue after 10 years. Admit it, you didn't need to talk to me about anything at all, did you? I don't have time to waste on childish conversations with you. I'm blocking you. I'll also be telling Elena that you looked at her phone while she wasn't looking. Wait, I'm about to make you an offer you can't refuse. An offer I can't refuse? You're 40 now, right? You did pretty well to become a CEO, I'll give you that. But no matter how well your work life is going, your private life must be pretty lonely, right? Excuse me? You looked somehow tired of everything when I saw you. I thought you might be in need of a little action, if you catch my drift. Well, I just want you to know that I'm willing to step up to the task. I can be your guy. Uh, what are you talking about? Let's face it, you're old, you're dried up, and you probably get less action than a comic book enthusiast. How long has it been? Years? A decade? Well, in my infinite kindness and benevolence, I'm willing to satisfy your needs for the low, low price of $750 a time. How does that sound? You know it's the best you're gonna get, so don't even bother pretending to be shocked. I know you like the back of my hand, inside and out, every solitary crevice, every hidden nook and cranny, so leave everything to me, sweet cheeks. Your mind, your body, your soul, I've got you covered. <laughs> uh, gross. It's actually impressive how shamelessly you're able to say such disgusting things. Oh. My husband says you're to go to the CEO's office first thing tomorrow morning. Go up to the rating room as soon as you get to the office. Huh? The CEO's office? Wait, what? Your husband? Yes, my husband. That means the guy I'm married to. You got married again? That's right. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? I only volunteered because I felt bad thinking you were a lonely spinster. I'm not interested in some old hag's wife. <laughs> You're the one who assumed I was single despite knowing nothing about me anymore. Well, anyone who'd marry you can't be all that much. Who is he? Some basement-dwelling nerd? A homeless guy? A drug addict? <laughs> no self-respecting man would marry a worn-out 40-year-old divorcee. He's probably fat and bald or, or old or all of the above. I know it. Did you forget what I just told you? Huh? What are you talking about? I said you're to go to the CEO's office as soon as you get to work in the morning. Why would I have to go to the CEO's office? Stop talking crap! Oh no, you're not getting Alzheimer's too, are you? The last thing you need is your wits going the same way as your looks, but I guess it was inevitable. Stop talking crap, you pathetic old bat! My husband is the CEO of your company. Huh? Does the name Elvin Moss ring a bell? Well, he's my husband now. He's also watching this entire conversation. Gah! You're joking, aren't you? Yes, you have to be. This is all just one big silly joke, isn't it? Tell me it is. It isn't. That's why Elvin wants to see you in his office first thing tomorrow morning. You've hurled your fair share of malicious abuse at me, and you will be punished accordingly. Helen, 
I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. You see, I've had a fever these last few days, and I haven't been feeling myself. I, I, I think, I think I need a warm drink and some rest. I really am sorry, and, and by that, I mean super sorry. Did I mention how sorry I am? And Mr. Mosk, sir, please forgive me for my disgraceful behavior. The things I said about your beautiful, kind, intelligent wife, the, there's just no forgiving them. I don't know what came over me. It's too late. <laughs> no, please. There was no ill will behind any of it. Are you really claiming you said everything you did with no ill will? That's not gonna fly with me. Regardless, whether there was ill will or not, you said what you said, and the consequences will be what they will be. Nothing changes. I'm so sorry. Look, to tell you the truth, my life hasn't been going so well lately. I've had all this pent-up frustration, and, and when I heard about how well you were doing, I took my anger out on you. D do I look like you're punching back? I'm sorry, my actions are unforgivable. I promise I'll never contact you again. I'll never say anything mean to you again. I heard your lover pulled a vanishing act on you after divorce. Is that true? I also heard you haven't heard from her since. Oh, could it be that she was only after your money all along? And as soon as she realized you guys wouldn't be eating out as much anymore due to the compensation you owed, she lost interest? How did you know that? A little birdie told me. I have friends in all sorts of places, and you wouldn't believe the things I hear. Did you really think you had any allies in your crowd you constantly ranted to? About how women in their 30s are basically grandmas these days? Or how stay-at-home housewives are human garbage? You even got warned once at work about your hateful remarks. I'm just the type of person who says what's on my mind, that's all. I never meant to upset anyone. <laughs> Why do people have to read so deeply into things? Ah, I see. So you're free to say whatever you like as you never meant to hurt anyone, is that right? In that case, let's just make something clear. You're a worthless scumbag. You're a worn out, desperate, pathetic old man with no value to anyone who blew all his money on a gold digger. Your personality's rotten to the core, and you're beyond saving. You're not just a disgrace to humanity. That would be putting it too mildly, but to all forms of life in the universe. That's why no one wants anything to do with you. You've really gone down in the world, huh? You used to be so full of pride and bluster, and now look at you. A lonely old man reduced to begging for money from his ex-wife. That was just uncalled for. Oh, that's funny. I thought I could say whatever I wanted. There's no ill will, you know. I was just taking a leaf out of your book, Vincent. What's the issue? Helen, it was wrong of me to divorce you like that. I disagree. I think it was the best thing you ever did. I'm so much happier without you in my life. Really? I can't say the same, babe. I'm at rock bottom here. Work is all I have left. You can't take that from me, too. Do you really want to back me into a corner like this? Without my job, I'll have nothing. Please, convince your husband, Mr. Mosk, to overlook this. Please, for old times' sake. I'll do nothing of the sort. You're the one who messaged me today. I want you to remember that. You're the one who mocked and abused me. Would you mind explaining how you're suddenly the victim in all this? I'm so sorry! I truly am sorry, Helen! I swear, I'll behave from now on! I'll never message you again! I'll dedicate my whole life to my work! I'm pleased to hear you say that, but it's far too late. If only this had been your attitude from the beginning. Unfortunately for you, it's not down to me anymore. I'm leaving the rest to my husband. Helen, please call him off! Find it in yourself to forgive me! I'll get on my knees! I'll do anything! I'll turn over a new leaf, I promise! I'm begging you! I'll clean your house! I'll get rid of the weeds in your garden! I'll wash yours and your husband's clothes! Please help me! I'll do anything! I mean it! I don't need a slave. Besides, all that sounds very stay-at-home housewife, don't you think? Finally admitting to being a piece of human garbage, are we? You reap what you sow, but you know what? I'm happier than I've ever been right now. I have a loving husband at my side, and I'm surrounded by the most wonderful children. I have a room enough in my heart to support you. You do? That's my girl. I knew you'd pull through. You really do have a big heart. Huh? Oh, don't misunderstand me. I'm not gonna do anything for you. 
I'm just encouraging you to use the supreme arrogance of yours to make your life for yourself now. When I say I support you, I just mean I'll be rooting for you from the tiny corner in the back of my mind as your ex-wife. The next morning, my ex-husband Vincent was summoned to my husband's Elvin's office, and there, the CEO's office, he was dismissed and announced, There have been several reports of him making hateful comments about women around the office. And not only that, but apparently he'd also been harassing and bullying some of the newer members and staff. Elvin said he had no other choice but to let him go. The fact that he offered me sexual favors at $7.50 each is pretty far outside of what's considered acceptable. Conduct for an employee towards the CEO's wife. It can't be said to have worked in his favor. Everything that happened to Vincent was, of course, his, entirely his own fault. And soon, it became obvious that he didn't have any allies in the company, when not a single person appeared to defend him. I have no idea how he continued to support himself after he lost his job. To be honest, I don't care. I'm just paying me and my family have nothing to do with him ever again. That said, I can't claim my feelings towards my ex-husband are entirely negative. If not for him and that dark period in my life, I wouldn't be leading the blissful, fulfilled life I am now. The company I set up is doing amazingly well, and I'm lucky enough to have a kind, loving husband and the most wonderful children a woman could ever hope for. None of that would have been possible if Vincent hadn't divorced me. It's not that I'm grateful towards him, but I'm grateful that it happened, and I played an important part in me moving on to the next stage in my life. The past is the past, and I don't intend on holding on to any of the negativity. In fact, my priority in life now is doing what makes me and my family happy. It's my mission to make sure my company is the best at what it does, and that my household is always full of love, warmth, and respect. Here's to the future. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.